Welcome to the Virginia Association of Collegiate Registrars and Admissions Officers Virtual College Fair. We're so excited to have you participating in this event today. We have some fantastic schools with us here, um, but before we get started, uh, just a few quick housekeeping items. Uh, the first is my name is Christopher and I'll be your facilitator for this event. Uh, we also wanna remind you that your camera and microphone are off so the panelists will not be able to see or hear you. Also, attendees are welcome and certainly encouraged to ask questions to any of the panelists at any time utilizing the Q&A feature. You can pose your question to a specific panelist or you can ask a question to any and all of the institutions. Also, there are two other blocks of sessions today. So if you haven't signed up for those yet, uh, please do feel free to do so. And also a recording of this session uh, will be available at the strivescan.com backslash Virginia website. Without further ado, I'd like to go ahead and turn it over to our first panelist. And so today, first up, we'll be hearing from Nova Southeastern University. Thank you so much, Christopher. And thank you guys so much for joining us on this Sunday. Like Christopher said, my name is Julia Severance. I am from beautiful South Florida um, and I currently am the rep for the um, NSU here. So I do wanna just give some basic information about NSU. Uh, we are centrally located here in South Florida. I'll go a little bit more in depth that later on, but we are a private selective research institution. We originally started as a doctoral program, moved into the master's degree and then opened up our doors at the bachelor's level. So although we have 20,000 students on our main campus here in Davie, uh, only about 6,000 of them are undergraduate students. So you're never going to feel like a number here at NSU. Our average class size is 17, but I've seen classes anywhere from 5 to 30, uh, just depending on what class you're taking and the time that you're taking that class. One thing that I love, so we do have all uh, states represented on our campus, as well as over 115 different countries. Another great unique program we offer here at MSU is having an academic advisor and a career coach built into one person. So they're going to be with you for all four years that you are an undergraduate student, and they're going to be helping you with internships, picking your classes, getting you into the mindset of going into your field. So again, definitely a lot of opportunities for success here. And uh, lastly, I just want to touch on the point of research. So like I mentioned earlier, we are very heavy in research. We have over 150 research projects currently happening on our campus, and we have an entire facility actually dedicated to research that a lot of our graduate students are currently using, and our undergraduates are shadowing those graduates right now. So we are, all, um, lastly, I just want to mention, we are highly ranked, not only on US News, but the uh, WSJ as well. And we always pride ourselves on that and hope to rise up every year. So just to kind of give you some more information about us, uh, we do have over 50 different undergraduate degree programs. The ones that you see on the screen here are some of our most popular, um, but we definitely offer a lot more um, here at NSU. And a lot of our students are combining those degrees as double majors, double minors. So we are really flexible here at NSU with their education and getting you that specific degree that you need to be successful. Um, I do want to just talk about a little bit of our opportunities here at NSU. So one thing that we require from undergraduate students is Excel units. And the reason we require this is because we want to give you hands on experience before you leave our doors as an undergraduate student. So that way you can go to an employer and they have no excuse not to hire you. So some of the ways that you can gain these Excel units is study abroad, travel study, internships. We have plenty of different internships in all different fields. Uh, we also have a lot of different events that we have um, speakers come that you can earn Excel units from. And again, research is going to be the most popular for our Excel units. So we actually have an oceanographic center that's just 30 minutes south of us uh, in Dania Beach, where students are currently doing coral reef restoration and some crazy students who are currently shark tagging as well. So definitely a lot of exciting stuff here to offer for the marine sciences at NSU, um, but also in just many other fields as well. Talking a little bit about non-academia and kind of just fun stuff to do. We are a division two school, 16 different sports that are represented on our campus. 
130 different clubs and organizations. Uh, that's anything from Greek life, hobby based, career oriented, you name it, we have it. If we don't have it, you can always start your own. Uh, all it takes is six students and an advisor to oversee it. And you will have a uh, organization that you can make your mark here at NSU. Uh, we also are highly ranked on niche for uh, best college campuses because again, we are located in beautiful sunny South Florida, only about 15 minutes away from Fort Lauderdale Beach, one hour away from the Florida Keys and three hours away from the second happiest place on the planet, NSU being the first, of course, and Disney being the second. Um, average temperature is 77, but if you're a Floridian, you know that's a little bit cold. Uh, and then again, we just have a lot of community service here at NSU because our students will give any excuse to go to the beach beach, even if that means a beach cleanup every weekend. So when we are looking for students that are applying to NSU, we kind of want to see students who have done, um, you know, classes that have been honors, AP, IB. Uh, we want to see students that are academically driven. We do get about 14,000 applications every year and about um, seven, uh, 1,700 come onto our campus for the fall. So most of them are from Florida, um, about 36 are out of state. And again, just including that international population of six. We are test optional for this year. So these scores that you see here, um, we just kind of like a ballpark in that area. But if you are anywhere under or below or do not have test scores, please do not let that stop you from applying because again, that is not a requirement this year. Um, we also have a really great transfer population as too. So if coming in your freshman year is not really ideal, always come think about us a little bit later in that process as well. So we do have three different um, deadline applications that I wanna quickly briefly talk about. Um, early decision is going to be for students where you're gonna have a binding application, um, but you will be able to have that decision before the holidays. Our early action is a non-binding, so you'll still receive your decision before the holidays. Um, it's also a really good opportunity for you to get involved here at NSU. And then we have that regular decision. We are on the common application and we also have our own application on our website. So either one, please feel free to pick. Um, we just need your official transcripts, your test scores, and uh, that's it. So uh, please feel free to stay in contact with me. Uh, I will drop my uh, email and my name down in the chat, uh, but we are also on social media and we are constantly updating that for you guys as well. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, NSU. Um, and just a reminder to any attendees who just joined us, uh, please do feel free to ask any questions you may have to any of the panelists utilizing that Q&A feature. But up next, we're gonna hear from the University of Pittsburgh. You're, on, you're muted, Jane. I'm muted, okay. I swear I hit that button. Anyways, I'm excited to tell you about the University of Pittsburgh today. It is my alma mater. I have um, also been working in admissions for about six years now, so I'm very happy to tell you about it. Um, University of Pittsburgh, it is, there's so much that I can really say. The way that I describe the University of Pittsburgh to students is to call it um, sort of like a big long buffet table. Um, so it just is filled with all sorts of different dishes and different foods and different flavors. And every single student who goes down that buffet line will pick and choose what they like, what they wanna try, what they want a lot of. Um, and every single student who goes through the University of Pittsburgh comes out with a plate that's different from everybody else. Um, so the whole goal with the University of Pittsburgh is to give a lot of options a lot of opportunities and a lot of resources to students to allow them to customize, personalize, and be really flexible with their program at Pitt. Um, so that's academic flexibility, that's extracurricular flexibility. Um, everything is really designed to be very customizable. So you can see from what I have here, it's all hodgepodge. There's a lot going on. Uh, Pitt is a large institution with over 19,000 total undergraduate students, but it offers that flexibility and that balance with a 14 to one student to faculty ratio. Similarly, it's an urban campus. It is in the city, um, but it offers again that balance of having a um, contained campus environment where you can very distinctly tell you're on a college campus, even though you're in the mid middle of a bustling city. Um, 600 plus student clubs and organizations. We are a division one school with 19 division one athletics teams. Um, and 
over 100 majors, minors, and certificates that you're able to mix and match. You can uh, double major, triple major, you can major minor, add on multiple certificates. There's just a lot that you can do in um, the University of Pittsburgh, uh, depending on what your interests are. With that in mind, the way that I sort of approach these, these six minutes is to um, sort of talk about the, the top five things that I think are important to know, the top five like main dishes, right, on this buffet table. Uh, the first one being that Pitt is a very highly ranked and reputable university. Um, so you are able to look at the different programs available at the University of Pittsburgh um, and see that no matter what it is that you're interested in, you can rely on a very high quality experience. So we are the number one public university University in the Northeastern United States, if you're looking to stay in that area um, or move a little further up north. Um, we're, you know, among the top public colleges and universities, among the best global universities. So no matter what it is you're looking for, um, Pitt can offer a pretty good experience for you. The city of Pittsburgh is another one of these top things. It is a diverse um, and um, exciting city to live in. And the university does an excellent job connecting students to the opportunities of the city through fare free public transportation, discounted tickets into museums, sporting events, cultural events, all sorts of things like that. Um, and it is, last time I checked, the number three most livable city in the United States. The number three thing is research as early as your first year at Pitt. Um, you are able to get involved in research in any field on campus. Um, it could be scientific or lab research. It could be research in the social sciences, in um, urban studies, political science. It could be research in the arts, anything like that is all uh, happening on campus all the time. And um, the, the um, opportunities are so abundant that you are able to get involved as early as your first year. And there are um, offices on campus, um, peer mentors on campus to help you get started um, as early as then. Number four, internships and career development. So this encompasses a lot of things. Uh, Pitt is very focused on offering hands-on opportunities to students. Um, hands-on could be something like research, um, getting involved on this sort of academic level, uh, being like a, a tutor or um, an undergraduate teaching assistant or something like that. But it could also mean um, doing volunteer experiences in your career field. Um, it could mean going through our um, career office and preparing and applying for internships in the city. Um, one of those secret benefits of going to a city school is that pretty much every field is represented in the city um, and internship opportunities are really available. Our internship prep program within our career office prepares students extremely well to go out into um, that sort of marketplace and be very competitive applicants for those internship opportunities. And finally, this is just something that I think is really unique to Pitt. Students who apply into Pitt as freshmen have the ability to be reviewed for graduate school programs with their incoming application. Um, so put that on your application. Uh, let us know if any of these are interesting to you and we'll review you for them coming in as a first year student. If you earn one of these guarantees, uh, basically what that means is you have a seat saved for you in that graduate school program um, once you finish with your four years. Finally, if you're interested in applying, these are the things that you absolutely need to do. You need to fill out an application and we're on three application platforms and have no preference between them. Um, obviously the application fee or a fee waiver, which you can get by visiting campus. Um, your academic record refers to a transcript, so self-reported or from your high school, um, and acceptable test scores. We are test optional through fall of 2023, so you have that secret option of not submitting scores at all, but if you do want to submit scores, we accept the SAT and the ACT. And then finally, a personal statement. Personal statements are incredibly helpful in our review process because they allow us to be a little bit more holistic in our process. Um, if you have any questions, you can email Pitt Admissions. Um, we'd be happy to talk to you further, or you can email me um, as the rep from Virginia. I'll put my information in the chat as well. And thank you so much for hearing about the University of Pittsburgh. Thank you very much, University of Pittsburgh. Um, up next, we're gonna move to Mount St. Mary's University. All right, great, thank you so much. My name is Casey Smile. I'm one of the admissions counselors at Mount St. Mary's University. I'm also a proud Mount graduate. Um, I graduated from the Mount in 2020, so I'm going to my sixth year at the Mount. Um, absolutely love the school and I'm excited to share a little bit with you guys today. So we were founded in 1808, so we have 213 years of Catholic tradition. We're located about an hour outside of Washington, D.C. 
in the mountains of Western Maryland. Um, we're a smaller university. So you have just on a little bit above 2000 students in our undergraduate class size. Now we have around 150 seminarians and around 300 graduate students. So keep in mind, you know, as you're looking at colleges, maybe um, what master's programs might be of interest to you. But while we are small, we represent people from 44 states and 38 countries. So we are all over the map. We have around a 50 to 15 male to female ratio. And you'll notice that number there at the bottom. So 77% of our students live on campus all four years. We are not a commuter school. Once our students are on campus, they want to be here because there's just always something going on, whether that be academically or outside of the classroom. Now I mentioned we're a Catholic university. So um, we have around 51% of our students that identify as Catholic, but we welcome people and students of all religious backgrounds. So we have seven chapels on campus. Um, we offer mass daily, but we also have sacred spaces on campus for students who aren't Catholic and want to continue practicing their faith. You can get as involved or not as involved in your faith as you would like to. It is totally up to you. We do not force the Catholic faith upon any of our students here. So talking a little bit about academics, the Mount has over 70 majors and minors that students can choose from. Now our class schedule is a little bit unique to the Mount and different than other the, um, types of universities. So I like to tell students it's broken down to three different parts. About a third of it is dedicated to your core. So you're gonna take just general education classes, a math class, a science class, history courses. About a third of your class schedule will be dedicated to your major, whichever major or minors you decide on. And then about a third is dedicated to some flex room. So here at the Mount, we don't expect students to come into the university at 17, 18 years old, knowing what you wanna do for the rest of your life. That can be very intimidating. So we allow our students up to two years to declare a major. So you can come into the Mount, take some of those core classes and maybe fall in love with a major or find your passion within the major. And you can declare as early as your second semester or you can wait the full two years, which a lot of our students will do, just so they can try out different interests um, and experience new things here on campus. Now, again, we're a smaller school. So we have a 14 to one student to faculty ratio. That means you're gonna have smaller class sizes. So around 18 students in a class, the biggest class you're gonna have here at the Mount, it's gonna be probably around 25 students. Um, so we're a more discussion-based school. We don't have big lecture halls. Your professors are going to know your name. They're gonna expect you to come to class, expect you to participate. They wanna hear your ideas and different thoughts on topics. So be prepared to talk a little bit in class. Now, another big part of what we do here at the Mount are internships. So 76% uh, of our students will complete an internship before they graduate. Um, again, I, am, I mentioned our proximity to Washington, D.C. A lot of our students will go down there. We're also about 15 minutes from Gettysburg and 25 minutes from Frederick, Maryland. So students can either do internships off campus. It is free to bring and park a car on campus all four years, or there are a lot of good op um, internship opportunities on campus as well, especially in our sciences. You can be, um, be prepared to uh, get in a lab um, going into your second semester here at the Mount. Um, and get good experience under your belt. We're finding more and more that employers want to see that students do have good experience on their resume before they graduate. Now, 70% of your time is going to be spent outside the classroom. So what are you doing with that time? Well, we have over 70 clubs and organizations that keep our students involved. Um, this is just a list of a few of them. Every year we have a big block party where students can just go sign up for whatever clubs, organizations they're interested in, and then the club leaders will reach out to students. So we are a very hyperactive campus. Our Career Center encourages our students to get involved, create their own club, or find something on campus that they're passionate about, because these are all student-led. So this is a great opportunity to get um, leadership experience without even having to leave campus. We're also a division one school. So we around 33% of our students um, compete at the division one level. Our arenas, our track team, um, our soccer fields, they will pack out with students. We love supporting our fellow Mountaineers on the field, on the court, on the track. So um, big incentive for our students to actually go to the games is quick free food. We are a very food driven campus. Um, but yeah, definitely go check out our website and see what um, division one sports we offer. So hopefully you like what you're hearing about the Mount. I quickly want to run through the application process with you guys. So we're going to need three things from you. First, we're going to need you to apply. 
you can either do that through our university application or we are also on the Common App. They are reviewed exactly the same, do whichever one you prefer. We're also going to need your high school transcript um, and we're going to need at least one letter of recommendation from a guidance counselor or a teacher. It needs to be someone who knows you academically. If you have a coach, a pastor, someone who knows you um, in a different capacity, please include that in your application. We will review it, but at least one from an academic source. Optional pieces down there are a personal statement, a resume, and additional letters of recommendation. Um, please include them because they can help increase your merit scholarship. So these are all online. Um, feel free again to check out our website at msmary.edu um, and reach out with questions because we are more than happy to help. Thank you very much, Mount St. Mary's. Um, up next, we move to the Catholic University of America. Perfect. Thank you so much. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here so everyone can see the presentation. Uh, but my name is Tom Berry. I'm one of our senior admission counselors here at Catholic U. Uh, I'm also a 2014 graduate of the university, um, and I studied, excuse me, uh, media and communications here at the university, moved on to get my master's as well while coaching basketball full time. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about athletics in a second, uh, but from the numbers, uh, we are uh, an institution of about 3,100 undergraduate students. 80% of our students self-identify as Catholic. I should mention that about 45% uh, of our incoming freshman class each year are coming from public high schools. 27% uh, of our student body self-identify as ethnically diverse. We have 34 on-campus research centers. We are actually the second oldest graduate research center uh, in the United States. We were founded back in 1887 uh, as the National University of the Catholic Church. Uh, back then it was just philosophy at the graduate level, but we've expanded uh, to the undergraduate level. And I'll talk about that and the academic soon. Inside the classroom, uh, average class size is about 19. Uh, and we have the largest and greenest campus in DC. Uh, so when you're on campus, Yes, we're considered an urban uh, university, uh, but it's really a truly residential college campus feel uh, as you walk around. We always tell our students there's a lot to do outside the classroom, and this, this slide uh, pertains to that. There's over 100 clubs and organizations available for students at Catholic U. If, they, if we don't have the club or organization that you're looking for, uh, you can create it. It really just takes you, uh, a couple friends, uh, and a faculty advisor, uh, and you'll, you'll be able to create that club. We are a division three institution, so all of our students are coming here first and foremost as students. None of them are going to be on athletic scholarships here at Catholic U, but we're still competing at the highest level and we compete yearly uh, against a lot of division one institutions uh, as well. Uh, we have nine club sports and 16 intramural leagues for students who want to stay involved athletically, but not necessarily at the varsity level. And there's two fitness centers on campus. Uh, we have the Kane Fitness Center for the general student population and then the DeFore Athletic Center uh, for our varsity athletes. Uh, on campus, there's about 40 to 50 events each week. Uh, that includes service opportunities through campus ministry. I always tell our students that campus ministry is kind of the heartbeat of our campus. Uh, we just completed the Mother Teresa Day of Service. Uh, that was a week ago today, uh, so it was last Sunday. Uh, and a fun fact about Catholic U, we actually gave uh, Mother Teresa her first honorary doctorate back in 1971. Our capital location is, I always say, one of the top three reasons that students choose to attend Catholic U. Uh, as you can see here, we have a map of the, uh, the subway lines here in DC, and that little arrow is pointing to the Brookland CUA Metro stop. Uh, we're on the red line, which is the oldest line in DC. It has some of the most popular spots. We're three stops north of Union Station, four stops north of uh, the National Mall, and five stops north of the really hustle and bustle of the city. And those stops are so close together within the city itself that you can get downtown uh, really to the heart of DC within about 12 minutes. Uh, that gives you access to all of the history, uh, which DC has a lot of, the cultural as well. And then music and sports uh, in addition to that. So a lot of things that you can take part in outside the classroom. And then obviously internship opportunities. It gets our students to their internships, which I'll talk about now. So through, uh, through the Academic and Career Success Office, you're gonna have a four-year advisor that talks not only about the academics, but also your career goals, your aspirations, what you wanna do with a Catholic U degree. Uh, about 80% of our students complete at least one internship before they graduate, 60% complete two or more, and a quarter of our last graduating class graduated having done three internships um, here at Catholic U. 
90% of our students are either employed, they are doing service, uh, they are continuing their education, or um, they have entered uh, religious life uh, within six months of graduation. And then we have 3, 000, over 3,000 internship opportunities for our students right here in the DC metro area. And you can see a list of them on the bottom left-hand side. Uh, those are just some of the coolest uh, and most unique ones that we have. Uh, and the one I always like to point out is that we have so many interns and faculty members uh, through the School of Engineering, uh, working over at NASA Goddard in Greenbelt, Maryland, about 20 minutes from our campus, that we have our, our own office there. Uh, so it's not uncommon uh, for certain uh, industries to actually have offices full of Catholic U interns and faculty and staff members. From an academic standpoint, I'll be brief here because we offer a lot. Uh, we have uh, over 70 uh, degree programs, over 60 minor, minor and certificate programs, uh, but the School of Arts and Sciences, the Bush School of Business, and the School of Engineering, you can come in exploratory. Uh, so you have plenty of time until second semester of sophomore year to declare a major. School of Arts and Sciences is our largest school. Fun facts about the rest of them. School of Architecture and Planning, there's three fully accredited architecture programs in the country uh, amongst Catholic institutions. We're one of them. It's us, Notre Dame, and Detroit Mercy. Uh, we have the only music school here in D.C. through the Rome School. Conway School of Nursing is our most competitive program, and it has been for about six decades now. And uh, we actually have just received $40 million to double the size of our nursing program, as well as double uh, the size of our facilities. We'll be building a brand new nursing and science uh, facility here in the next two years. Uh, the National Catholic School of Social Service is the number one Catholic social work school in the country. Uh, it is top three at the undergraduate level. It is number one at the graduate level. And the highest percentage of students that we have sticking around to pursue their master's are actually, actually our social work students. Uh, they have a five-year MSW program. What we do with each and every application is uh, unweight everyone's GPA down to a 4.0 scale. We will then assess a strength of curriculum. That's how many uh, honors AP and IB courses are provided at your school in comparison to how many you took advantage of during your four years there. We are a test blind institution, which is different than test optional. We do not look at SAT or ACT scores, no standardized test scores for the basis of admission, financial aid or scholarship or the university honors program. So when you apply to Catholic U, we are test blind. There is no application fee whatsoever. Um, and we do take a look at activities, service and leadership uh, programs as well. And everyone has automatic consideration for the honors program. Our scholarships range anywhere from 17 to $32,000, and $32,000 goes to our highest achieving students that get that invitation into the honors program. And if you happen to be a member of a Catholic parish, we have a $4,000 scholarship for that as well. Uh, so without further ado, I'd like to turn it over to the next uh, counselor. Thank you very much, Catholic U. Um, as we head into our final two pre presentations for this session, just a reminder to all of our attendees, uh, please do feel free to submit any questions you have through the Q&A feature. But up next, we're gonna hear from Illinois Wesleyan University. All right, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Andrew Starnes, and I am Regional Admission Representative for um, the Southern States for Illinois Wesleyan University. I do live in East Tennessee. Um, so um, just happy to be right across the border from Virginia and uh, looking forward to getting a chance to spend the next few minutes here with you uh, talking a little bit more about Illinois Wesleyan and, you know, on some of our uh, many uh, facts and achievements that we have, um, including how we're proud to be um, for the third time in four years, top 10 uh, national school for job placement. So I hope um, you will enjoy uh, learning a little bit more about the school. So to start us off, uh, we are located in Bloomington, Illinois. That's about two and a half hours south of Chicago. Bloomington itself has about 130,000 residents, so we are a vibrant college town. Um, and we are a deeply uh, rooted liberal arts university, about 1,700 undergrads at our school, 16 students on average in the classroom, 10 to 1 student teacher ratio. Um, we always say uh, small classes, the medium sized campus, um, but big college town and big success at our school. In fact, we're an undergrad only institution. So there are no grad students at our school. So it's all about the undergrad experience. In fact, over a quarter of our students are being involved in independent graduate level research opportunities with their professor. Uh, one thing about the classroom size is you're not gonna see uh, like at the larger universities are the lecture hall classrooms. You won't see any of this at IWU. You're definitely gonna get um, a lot less lecture and more discussion, more in-depth discussion uh, with our faculty members. Um, and that just allows you know, not only your questions to get answered, but to really connect with faculty, with peers at a personal level. 
so that way you can truly engage in that discussion. Um, it's what the liberal arts is all about, no matter what track of degree you'll be on at our school. Um, speaking of which, we do, uh, like many of the wonderful schools on here, have tons to choose from. We actually have over 80 different major minor combinations. So again, if you're looking for a small university uh, with tons of opportunity with different degree selections, definitely want to keep us in mind. Um, some of the ones that stand out, we do have our School of Nursing, um, now clicking over to 100% um, job placement rate in the last two decades alone. Um, the College of Fine Arts, we, we excel so much in the School of Theater Arts. I have uh, theater applicants all the time across the South, including Virginia, uh, for musical theater, um, stage acting, uh, just so many different routes on that. Wonderful School of Music and Art um, as well, too, uh, with the professional degrees and the, the Bachelor of Arts as well. And then our College of Liberal Arts contain the majority of our majors and minors, everything from accounting to our pre-med track to our neuroscience, uh, physics degrees. Um, we, even though we're liberal arts, we have such incredible STEM programs across the board. Um, now at IWU, um, even though we are a smaller university in the Midwest, uh, we do uh, take a lot of pride in our growing diversity. Um, we actually just had the most diverse class in our school's history this past year. We average right around about a third of our students, our students of color on background. Um, and we do so many different ways to make sure that we're a very inclusive campus uh, from all students of backgrounds and walks of life. And uh, you know everything through the admission process to make sure we're taking care of everyone, um, but ultimately through our pre-orientation programs as well, um, special graduation ceremonies. Um, we are an interfaith campus. I mean, there's just so many different ways that we like to fill of all students to, to connect and really make sure they have a voice at our campus. And even students, first gen, we, we just had a large presence, about a third of our class coming in this past year was third, uh, first generation students, Pell eligible students. So we really are a good melting pot um, for our campus size. We have over 120 different student organizations. We have vibrant Greek life. We have sororities and fraternities on campus. We have intramural sports. There's just so many different ways for students to get involved outside of the classroom. We like to think that we uh, think a lot like a big university, but still keep things at the small level. Um, we actually um, are D3 NCAA, uh, 24 different varsity sports at our, at our school. Um, we now have increased our academic All-Americans now to 142 academic All-Americans. So we are up on the top side of schools across the, uh, the whole country for producing um, athletic All-Americans. And we do have an esports program. So if you've ever thought about wanting to uh, go to school, potentially get recruited for esports, Definitely want to keep us in mind, you can't earn scholarship with the esports program as well, too. Um, our average net cost of attendance is uh, 28,000. And so after um, scholarships and merit, we actually will um, work with students to try to make sure we're very comparable on cost um, for um, the private universities in a region down in the South. So even though we are a Northern school, we never want anyone to be uh, potentially intimidated by the total cost. 95% of our students are going to receive financial aid. So we're going to take care of you on that side, especially if you have high merit and um, financial need as well. Um, for the next steps, our app is open. Um, it is a free application for our seniors. You could start applying now. Uh, we are on the common application and we are test optional for the second year in a row. Um, so for our averages, um, we had a 3.83 last year. Uh, GPA with a 26 ACT, 12, 10 SAT. If you're in that range or higher, you're not only going to be in great shape to be looking at admission for acceptance, but also higher side of merit. We are doing campus visits safely Monday through Saturday as well um, through this year. And we are still planning to have two open houses in October and November as well, too. So we certainly hope that you will make your way up onto campus uh, for your visit. And um, as always, my contact information up in the top left I do work with every student that applies from the Southern States personally. So if you have any questions for me, um, especially after this presentation, do not hesitate to reach out. Hope to see you apply and go Titans. Thank you, Illinois Wesley. Um, and our final presentation this session comes to us from DePaul University. Thank you so much, Christopher. And hello, everyone. Continuing on our journey into the Midwest, I'm gonna share my screen. And welcome to DePaul University. I'm Ben Hatchett, Regional Associate Director of Admission, and I'll be your guide for the next six minutes, give or take, for uh, DePaul. We're located just next to Illinois, so you're continuing your journey in the Midwest. We are in Indiana. We're located in beautiful Greencastle, Indiana, which is kind of a small rural setting, but we're 40 minutes from downtown Indianapolis. So kind of the best of both worlds. 
We're also a entirely undergraduate institution. I'll talk a little bit more in my time about our College of Liberal Arts and our School of Music, the two schools that you might find yourself here and as a future tiger. Before we dive too far, I want to just kind of give a little overview of kind of what DePaul is all about and what we've been recognized as being a leader in. We are the number one liberal arts college in the state of Indiana, a nationally ranked top 50 liberal arts college, number three in the nation when it comes to study abroad, something that we are so excited to get back into doing this year. You probably guessed it, that study abroad kind of looked a little bit different and almost became non-existent in the last 18 months. But we are happy to say that we're reopening several of our study abroad programs, and usually about 70% of our student body will graduate having completed some type of full semester study abroad experience. Over 90% of our Tigers will graduate completing some type of off-campus study. So that gives you a little bit more of an understanding of where those rankings come from and what we're all about. As I kind of alluded to earlier, you have two schools here that you'll find yourself studying. We have our College of Liberal Arts and our School of Music. It all makes up our one university and one campus. Starting off with the College of Liberal Arts, we have about 1,600 students or so in any given year continuing their education in the School of College of Liberal Arts. You see our top 10 listing there of majors, economics, communication, computer science continue to be our top three most popular majors and programs at DePaul, but it's not always a popularity contest. There's over 49 different majors and 56 minors that you have to choose from. So hopefully there's something on that ever-growing list that you might find yourself studying. What I loved about my time at DePaul, I am a graduate, is that we deferred that big major declaration. Most of our students will declare their major officially by March of their sophomore year, which gives you almost a year and a half to take classes that you're interested in. And there's nothing stopping you from declaring your major earlier in your four years, but having that year and a half is really special to dive into just the liberal arts curriculum and you might find new things that you had no idea existed. Pre-med and pre-law also continue to be really successful pre-professional track programs, which I think explains a little bit on that overall listing there that you see the health sciences and STEM, as well as several humanities and social sciences really well represented. Transitioning over briefly on our School of Music, our smaller but mighty cohort in the college and in our School of Music will be audition based. We have uh, almost 100 students or so doing four year music degree programs. We have a smaller number doing five year degree programs. But overall, about 400 students outside of the School of Music are in our College of Liberal Arts that are continuing music. Maybe you yourself are sitting here and thinking, yeah, I love music, but I don't know if a full four-year music degree program is right for me. But music's been a huge part of my life, my high school experience. Well, DePaul might be a great blend for you. It's not just the classical conservatory model. We have symphonic groups, music performance groups. Um, these are audition-based, but also non-audition-based, depending on where you fall in music. So diving in a little bit deeper, what we're all about, access is huge. By choosing a place like DePaul, you're looking at that small, private, liberal arts college, where our class sizes are around 15 to 17. Our student-faculty ratio is 8 to 1. What those numbers really mean is that you are doing the hands-on learning experience in our labs and classrooms. When it comes to study abroad and internship experiences, you truly are first in line. We don't have a graduate school, but we have some successful programs that could get you off to graduate school. But what's really great about this setting is our professors need your help to do the research, to complete internships and do amazing work on or off our campus. Global citizenship really is kind of what we aim for and we aspire to create those uncommon students and uncommon leaders that the world needs. So in your four years at DePaul, you're going to be amazed by the access to not only just fun opportunities on a college campus, but to challenge yourself and grow as a person and as a future leader. Really quickly, I'll let your eyes glance at some of our more statistic driven, driven, you know, why does this matter? Your investment into a school, into a private school. We have a huge success rate, 97% placement rate in six months out of graduation. We of course are always going to make sure we, we close in on that 3% difference of students. That might take a little bit longer. Than, than six months out from graduation. I alluded to medicine and law as some great pathways. You can see the numbers for themselves here. And I love to point out that just about 84% of our Tigers will complete and participate in at least one internship by the time they graduate. 
If you're still looking for a little bit more information and curious of where our Tigers are going, obviously we're still getting some numbers for, or some, some feedback from the class of 2021, which that, that data should be published soon. But for now, take a look at the class of 2020. Even in pandemic, our amazing graduates of last year found themselves going directly into graduate school and some pretty impressive employers just right out of college. In my final few moments here, I wanna remind you or just share that DePaul is a test optional institution and we are available on a free application on the Common App and we cannot wait to work with you and see you on campus. Take care and go Tigers. Thank you very much, Devon. Thank you to all of our great panelists today. We do have some time remaining, so if I could ask everybody to turn their videos back on, uh, perhaps we can do a quick round of questions here ourselves. Uh, so I'd pose the following question to you. Uh, what advice do you have for someone going through the college search process? When do we go in that same order, starting with NSU? Julia, uh, we'll come back to Julia. She may be having trouble with her mic. So let's move to uh, Pitt. All right, I can definitely relate to trouble with your mic. Um, yeah, so my advice for students who are looking at colleges and trying to figure out what it is um, that they're really looking for and, and what it is they really want out of their college is to um, do their best to try to visit campuses. Um, we. Uh, did a survey of our students who came to, to Pitt last year um, of what it was that really helped make their decision. And the majority of them did say visiting campus and getting a sense of the environment, the energy, the atmosphere, um, the people around campus, and just really being able to envision themselves on campus. Um, also keeping in mind that if you're not able to physically travel to student, certain schools, engaging with them in other ways, um, getting that experience by connecting with admissions counselors, with current students, things like that virtually, digitally, however you can, um, and trying to sort of get a feel of the campus that way as well. Great, thank you. Looks like Julia was able to rejoin us. Hi, yes. Um, can you please repeat the question because I yes, couldn't sure. hear it. Uh, what, what advice do you have for someone going through the college search process? I think one important thing to note going through the college process is doing your research. And that really correlates to who we are as an institution. Um, at NSU, you know, we're really focused on research, getting you that hands-on experience, and you really want to know everything that you're going into when you are starting the process. So it's important to have all the information so that you're fully aware. Great, thank you. Uh, Mount St. Mary's? Yeah, I would absolutely have to agree with the University of Pittsburgh's answer. Visit campus, um, visit a big school, visit a small school, visit a, a school in a city, um, a school that's in the country, um, and really just see where your interests lie. Um, also reach out to current students uh, when you're on campus because they're the ones living this lifestyle right now. They're in you know, the college environment, so they can really give you the best answer of what it's gonna be like on the campus that you're in. Thank you. Uh, Catholic University? Yeah, I totally agree with Casey. Uh, I think reach out to current students. Uh, they're the ones that are in the shoes that you'll be in pretty soon. Uh, so they know best. Uh, and absolutely reach out to faculty and staff members. I think that's one of the things that Catholic does really well. And a lot of the small to middle um, sized schools, they do a really good job of connecting faculty and professors with prospective students. If there's something you're super interested in learning about, a program, a degree, um, or even just a field in general, reach out to us. We'll get you in contact uh, with one of our faculty or staff members. Yeah, just want to echo what everybody else has said. I mean, all great suggestions. Uh, my biggest thing is that just stay in touch with your admission counselor. Um, we're really a one-stop shop, um, especially uh, the counselors that are working at small universities, um, whether it be financial aid, visiting, orientation. Um, we'll help you out along the way and take some stress off. My friends in the call have done an amazing job. The only thing I will add is follow our, our university social media accounts. I know many of you are already on those platforms, and this is a very casual and almost informal way to do your research without even trying. You can scroll through your feed, and suddenly one of our schools is going to pop up, 
and you might see what's going on live or in real time in one of our campuses. So if you haven't already, check out college and university social media accounts that we can stay up to date on all that's going on in our campuses. Great, thank you. Thank you again to everybody for uh, spending some time with us this Sunday. Uh, and certainly thank you to all of our attendees for joining us. Uh, before we close this session, we have just a few quick um, last, last minute housekeeping items. The first is that when you close this window, you will receive a very quick five question survey that we ask that you uh, complete to give us some feedback on our sessions. Also, just a reminder that there are two other blocks of sessions today. So if you haven't signed up for those yet, uh, please do so. And a recording of this session will be available at strivescan.com backslash Virginia. Uh, but thank you again to everybody and enjoy the rest of your Sunday. Have a great day. <laughs>